so public speaking that's what this is this is crazy nobody likes to do it it's terrifying you're up here alone while everybody else is down there <laughs> I'm kidding I know I'm not alone and I know I'm not judged because you guys are my people you're my community I love you all and you know that when I do this I have your best interest in mind I really want to share something with you guys that is in love let us continue so I think I'm a community person I really am I'm community minded I I love to get involved in things I love to talk to people I think you all know that definitely labeled extrovert but seriously I really enjoy people so much so that I'm usually late for things because I am chatting Mom, I learned this from you. I love you. <laughs> uh, you know, I was the person that if a kid was sitting by themselves, I went up to them and was like, hey, I'm Nicole. What you doing? Who are you? <laughs> I may have introduced myself to some of you that way too. It's who I am. So I like to think the best in people. I am the person who will help a complete stranger. I, I, I'll pray for someone I don't even know. Example, this week, the internet, you learn things about people you don't know. Like I don't, I don't know this person, but she's plastered all over the news. Um, Anne Heche, I don't even know if I'm saying the name right, but anyways, I went down the rabbit hole to learn about who she is. She's an actress that allegedly was drunk and drove into a building and then drove off and crashed into someone's house. The car burst into flames and the homeowner lost everything. Homeowner was fine, thank God. Uh, and the community is coming around her to help build it up. But people are also curious of what's going on with Anne Heche? Why'd she do that? So I'm praying for a complete stranger because obviously she's hurting something is going on. Life is messy. We're full of hurts. We get false information. We make mistakes. Thank God God loves us through it all. And thank God he gives us people to love us through it all. Like you. All of you, the church, we're meant to be in communion with one another, to help one another, to smile at each other. You never know what your smile is going to do for someone's day. Seriously. I mean, hey, God even gave Adam Eve because he said it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. You know? We can't understand empathy, compassion, and love without other people. We have to experience it to know it. To be loved by someone, like truly loved by someone, influences your behavior in a positive way. You trust they have your best interest in mind. Sometimes you even change your behavior to be more like them, hopefully growing together towards in the same direction. It's, it's like when you get married, you know, newly married, you're, you're growing in love and you'll learn that your husband leaves his wet towels on the floor and it's a bit of a problem that, you know, the behavior needs to change out of love. My husband now puts the wet towels in our fabric laundry bin, which causes another problem. But anyways, being loved motivates you to do behaviors to keep the love going, right? So you, you do things like pick up the towel because it bugs your wife and it's a way to show her love. I'll move on. 
Love has many definitions. The Apostle Paul is great at helping us understand this through his personal letters. We now get to see them as scriptures. Whether it be friend love, the, the filial love, or agape, the steadfast love of a father, or storch, at the familial tribal love, community love. Paul has wisdom to share. He opens his letters with sharing who he is in Christ, how God loves his people, and then follows with a lesson and some encouragement. He learned about the greatest love, a love that you've got to share. Paul's mission was to support faith, to help others see God's love, and to stand up to heresy. Paul openly admits that he was the worst of people, but that he knows better now. So empathy. Empathy is to be aware of others' emotions and attempt to understand their feelings. Compassion is an emotional response to empathy and now love. Love is getting to know the people whom he was writing the letters to. Love is calling the church your brother and sisters in Christ. Love is inviting people into your home. Love is inviting people into your life and sharing the most important thing to you with them. Paul instructs us in Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the days of his return is drawing near. In Colossians 3, 16, let the message about Christ in all all its richness fill your lives, your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Romans 13, 8. He says, Owe nothing to one another except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's love. God's law. Sorry. Words of law. Now, this is the these scriptures share about the filial love. So like the love of a friend that encourages. Now, what about storage, a familial tribal love? A love that cares enough to correct dangerous behaviors because they truly want you to prosper. We see this in Paul's letters. Now, most of these letters have some direct and clear instruction to improve the recipient's behavior. I won't list them because there's plenty. But Paul reminds us in scriptures like Galatians 6, 2, share each other's burdens and in this, in this way obey the law of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 12, 25 to 27. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored. All the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Paul got to know the people of God and was able to come alongside them and say, I advise you not to do that because this loving behavior is better and shows God's love to your neighbor. It's like getting into the mud when your friend is stuck. I mean, 
If your friend is struggling in their relationship and talking about divorce, I'm bringing up divorce just because it's obviously the first relationship that comes to mind. Care enough to ask questions, to pray with them, to help them see their part in the problem, and then direct them in Christ-loving ways to work on their relationship. Don't let it be their problem alone. There are other kind of relationships within a church that can experience difficulties, but I just brought up that one. Apologize. <laughs> Do you have empathy, compassion, and love for those in the church? Do you know your church well enough to know when something is off? Can you bring their darkness into light? It's easy to not go to church today. If you have a disagreement with someone or you disagree with something, you can pick up and leave or go somewhere else. And life is too hectic. There's little energy left over to go deeper into relationships. And we've figured out how to stay home and still get fed by the word. But reality is, a lack of investment in your community leads to loneliness, isolation, and temptations. We all have a deep yearning to be known and loved by God and others. To have someone who cares enough about us to protect us from danger, from evil, and to love us with grace and admiration. Adam was in relationship with God, but still had a need for, uh, for companionship. So God gave him Eve. God invites us to experience a glimmer of his love and the relationship with him through the church, through his people. Paul knew that agape love, the, the steadfast love of God the Father. But he also understood the importance of fellowship with Christian with the, our community and fellow believers. To give others a glimpse of this love. So today, may you experience a glimmer of this love in our church community. And may you know a love that Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. So now, go forth and love each other. <laughs> Seriously. Let's keep getting to know each other, support each other, continue putting in effort, and for those of you watching online, I love you. Get back here. I know everyone has their reasons, but it's important to be in relationship with your fellow believers. Let us pray together. God, I thank you so much that we have this beautiful building that we get to come together to do activities. Things like having that, that family day we had with the church in the back, in the backyard, playing games, singing songs this summer. It was amazing. Thank you that we support each other, that we're here for each other. God, I thank you for our leadership. I thank you for greeters like Pat, who have such a gift to just shine her joy to anyone that walks in that door who has the desire to reach out to people and say hi. God, I pray that we all learn that, at least with each other. God, I pray that you will help us to feel safe to get close to one another. Help us to, to feel safe to invite each other into our homes. 
to go deeper in our relationships, that we have confidence to come to our, our peers, our brothers and sisters in Christ and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you give me guidance? Can you pray for me? Help us to not be afraid to share our darkness. God, thank you for loving us and for providing people to be your light, your love in our lives, to just get a glimmer of the understanding. God, we pray for all of this in your name and in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Love you all. Bye.